This $500 gaming PC not only looks stealthy, but it also performs amazing, and we are gonna show you how to build it step by step. You can follow this guide to learn how to build this PC, or you can have a chance to win one as well, and we're gonna tell you all about that after a word from today's sponsor. Micro Center is the best place to shop for all your tech needs, but not all of us have one close to us. Luckily, they're expanding this year, and for those of you in North Carolina, you're in luck. Micro Center is opening a brand new store in Charlotte May 10th. If you live near Charlotte, you should sign up for all the early access perks and offers. And if you consider yourself a tech enthusiast, you're missing out if you aren't signed up for Micro Center News. With tech tips, reviews, exciting news, and more, Micro Center is posting the latest and greatest information in the industry for free, and you need to check it out. April is also Apple Savings Month over at Micro Center. While Apple products might not be the best for gaming, they're great for productivity, and if you're a part of the Apple ecosystem already. One of my favorite deals is Apple MacBook Air 13 for only $1,169. Micro Center is also having a deal for new customers. You get the Creality Ender 3 S1 3D printer for only $149. If you're interested in learning more about all of Micro Center's offerings, check out the links in the description down below or head over to microcenter.com. Big thanks to Micro Center for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. Let's go ahead and talk about the parts that make up this build. So first up is the Ryzen 5 5500. This is a six core 12 thread AM4 CPU from AMD, and it is an awesome CPU, but it does have limitations. It can only do gen three. That means your gen four NVMe SSDs are kind of a waste of money. And you also really shouldn't go to your way to buy brand new graphics cards that are gen four by 16 because you won't get the full bandwidth support. And to cool that CPU, which does come with a stock cooler by the way, but we like to be a little bit aesthetic around here. This is the PX4 from Dark Rock. It is a black tower cooler that is 120 millimeters and it's pretty cheap coming in around the $20 price point. And for the motherboard, once again to save some money, we actually got an Asus Prime B450M-A2. You could go with the B550 or even an X570 if you want to. We are going micro ATX because that is the cheapest to ship and it also saves you a lot of money going micro ATX. And it's actually a pretty decent board, four RAM slots. It does have two four pins for the CPU as well. And for the RAM, we have an Oli kit of RAM. It's a pretty usual contender around here because it's really cheap. It's DDR4, 16 gigs in dual channel, and they're 3200 megahertz in speed. And for the storage, we have an MP33 from Team Group. This is a Gen 3 NVMe drive. It'll be plenty fast and there's no extra cables to plug in. Now for the graphics card. We decided to go use for this build guide. This right here is a GTX 1660 Ti we picked up for around $115. Now really you can buy a 1660 Ti or a 1660 Super as long as it's within the 100 to like $120 mark. You're gonna get some really good price to performance with these graphics cards. We use them for a lot of different builds ranging from $300 all the way up to this $500 build. Great for the latest title still. Diving into the used market will save you a ton of money versus the new options that are on the market right now. So definitely consider this GPU for your build. And for the power supply, we have the good old Sequel Tab 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply. 650 watts is plenty for this PC build and honestly gives you a lot of room for upgrades in the future. And we use these a lot over at PCBros.tech, our PC selling business have had a very good experience with them. And for the case, we have the Moraval B3, which is a case company that's been around for a while. We used their budget cases a lot a few years ago, but we saw this new one on Amazon that is another O11 style case, but it comes with non-RGB fans pre-installed, three of them to be exact, and it's a nice bright gray text case that we're excited to build in, and it comes in at a great price point of around $69. So now we talked about all the parts that go into this PC build, we're gonna go back in time and show you guys how to build this thing step by step, and then show you how well it performs in the latest titles, because for the price, we think it's a really good build. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, guys, let's kick this thing off. We got the motherboard unboxed, and I'm just gonna show you guys the things that come with it. You're gonna get some SATA cables, which we're not gonna need, an IO shield, you will need that, and then we're gonna get some extra M.2 stuff, which you will also need. So the first thing I like to start off with is the CPU and the CPU cooler. So we got that Ryzen 5 5500 here. There is going to be a pretty prominent arrow, and with that arrow, you're gonna line up with the not so prominent arrow on the motherboard, right next to my fingernail there. So, and these can only go in one way, so don't worry. So what we're gonna do, is lift the latch up. It's gonna come out to the side and up, and then we're gonna just kind of set our CPU in there, and it should just fall right into place, and then you can lock it. If it doesn't fall right into place, you can kind of nudge it around a little bit, just be really careful. And now for our cooler, if you were using the AMD stock cooler, all you have to do is unscrew these four screws, then put the cooler on, it comes pre-applied with thermal paste. This is gonna be a little different. We actually have to apply our own thermal paste, and we have to install the mounting ourselves. I'm just gonna go ahead and while we're talking about thermal paste, go ahead and put some of this on there. It comes with some dark rock thermal interface material. You could buy some nicer thermal paste if you want to, but honestly, we've tested a lot of thermal pastes and most of them are pretty similar when they're in the cheaper price range. So I like to do a pretty good amount. Some people will tell you like a large P. I like to kind of spread it out a little bit just so that then you know you're gonna get good contact. Go ahead and take this peel off. It's very important guys, you don't wanna forget this. That's to make sure that we actually 
you know, can cool the CPU. So we're gonna put this off to the side and we're gonna go ahead and get out our mounting hardware. So this is Intel slash AMD. I suppose it's for, for both. So one trick. All right. And then this is going to be, wow, literally Intel slash AMD. All right, all right, okay, okay. So the, what these are is basically spacers so that you can get your CPU mounted uh, properly. But we're gonna go ahead and take a PH2 Phillips and remove our stock brackets. And I do recommend keeping these. These are always nice to have in case you ever get a different cooler because there are some that will use these stock brackets. All right, so now you're just gonna be left with the stock AMD backplate. Make sure you don't lose this. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and take these little spacers. Apparently they can only go on one way. Very cool, very cool. And boom, all right. We got our stock spacers on. And so now is a pretty good time. You don't wanna actually put the, especially if you have your thermal place on, don't actually put the cooler on, but I just wanna make sure I'm gonna mount these brackets on the right way. Yeah, that looks correct. So basically, you're gonna use these outer holes here and uh, they actually, let's see, do they, yep, they do include some new screws. So notice the ones that say AMD on them. But you're basically just gonna screw in the sides, just like this. And I recommend kind of getting one side in and then your other side, and then you can tighten them both down. All right, go ahead and tighten it down. Not super tight, just a little bit. And now repeat for the other side. We are tightened down. So at this point, uh, you, Sometimes you actually have to remove the fan, but look, you can actually get to the screw. We may need a longer screwdriver, but I think we can make it work. Go ahead and make sure that your fan cable's in a good spot that you can actually get to. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull mine out just like that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and kind of gently set this down, you know, make sure everything's still lining up good. So we're good to go. Now this is one where you really wanna try to kind of get opposing sides going because if you tighten one side down too much, it's on a spring and it will put a really odd amount of pressure on a specific spot of the CPU, kind of like I was just doing there. And you wanna make sure you don't do that because for one, you can uh, end up bending the CPU. And for two, your thermal paste may get all squished out of one side. So just kind of back and forth a couple times. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side out now. And you can use a PH2 Phillips or a flathead for this. And I, we recommend in, in, in this case, having the fan on the side that it's actually facing currently, just because uh, some coolers, the actual fan will sit over top of the RAM. So you may want to swap sides, but this actually is pretty good like this. Right now it is pulling air in towards the exhaust, which is exactly what we want. We actually got to plug the cooler in to make sure that the fan actually spins. So we're going to be using CPU fan or CPU fan one, depending on what motherboard you buy. You just want to make sure you plug it into a CPU fan, Heather, otherwise you're going to get an error every time you start up your PC. And also the temperature may not affect the speed of the fan if it's not plugged in the right header. So I think next up, we'll go ahead and do some RAM. We're gonna be using slots one and three. You can actually kind of vaguely see here where it has the little asterisks that you're supposed to skip a slot. So slot one and slot three, or some people like to call it slot two and four, whatever you wanna call it, but just follow my lead. Just follow along, guys. The gray slots. You know what, that's, that's a great way. Let, in, instead of saying numbers, we'll just say the color of the slots. And it can only go in one way. You basically have a notch. And then what I like to do, because this is fixed, this side you can't open if you notice. So I like to get this side in a little bit first. So you hear that click and then push down on that side. And these latches will close on their own. If they don't close on their own and you have to push them by hand, chances are your RAM's probably not seated all the way and you're gonna have some problems. It's M.2 time, time for your storage. So we get this little baggie that comes with two different things. It comes with an M.2 screw, which is a really tiny little Phillips screw that is PH1, and then a tiny little riser or standoff. So we're gonna be using the 2280 one and we're just gonna kind of put it in by hand. Now I do recommend tightening this when you're done with a pair of something like some needle nose pliers or if you happen to have the right socket, you could even use that. Um, in my case, I'm just gonna hand tighten it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the M.2. Can only go in one way, kind of like the RAM. It goes in at an angle, so this is totally normal. And so what you gotta do now, and this is why having a magnetic screwdriver is pretty nice. Notice how I can have the tiny little M.2 screw ready to go. But we're gonna take it, kind of hold it down with one finger. And this is gonna be a very, very gently tighten. You do not want a lot of force with this, a borderline hand tighten. So right about there. So now we know our M.2 is in. We got our CPU cooler on, we have our RAM on. This is almost a fully functional board at this point. And now we need to talk about getting the IO shield into the case and then the motherboard. Now, one thing we did do off camera is we flipped these fans right here, which in the original configuration out of the box, all the fans were set to exhaust. So we set these to intake by just unscrewing these screws right here. 
and flipping the fans and screwing it back in. Honestly, it's a very long process. We already did it, so we have it ready to go. You could do it at home if you want to, but in all honesty, it's not gonna make a major difference when it comes to temperatures. So now that we have the case ready, we're gonna go ahead and take our power supply, the good old Segotep power supply, which one thing to mention, this is a non-modular power supply. As you can see, there are a ton of cables right here. Some you need, some you don't, but in reality, this makes it much easier for first time builders and cable management is not too bad. So we're gonna go ahead and take the power supply. We're gonna flip this case around, move all these extra cables out of the way, and we're going to be installing our power supply with this fan side facing out. So go ahead and slide in the power supply. Is it lined up, Jonah? Yep. So as you can see, there are four screw holes for the power supply and we will be screwing them in. And I know they probably look like they've already been screwed in <laughs> because they have. You want know to let you all in on a little secret. We've done this already and there was no audio. So we're doing this again. So we're gonna go ahead and screw in this power supply. We are gonna be using power supply screws, which as you can see right here, look like this. They're coarse thread screws. There are four of them that come with your power supply in a little baggie with these zip ties, just so you know, this is what it looks like. And we're gonna go ahead and screw in the power supply using those screws. Now we have the power supply installed and ready to go. We have all our cables right where we need them to be. We're gonna go ahead and lay down the case to install the motherboard. Very straightforward. We're gonna go ahead and lay it down like so. But very important, you do have to install the IO shield, which the IO shield goes right here. And here's our IO shield. One rule of thumb we always like to recommend is these ports right here. The audio ports normally are on the bottom when you're looking at the case sitting up like it normally should. But in this scenario, it's gonna be right here. These are where the audio ports will line up. So we're gonna take our IO shield. Make sure to move this fan cable out of the way. You do not want it to get pinched. Go ahead and line up the IO shield. Push in all the corners. And like so, you have your IO shield installed and ready to go. Now we can install the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and lower the table just a little bit for Jonah here. Now one thing we have to make sure there isn't is an extra standoff. And you might be asking, what is an extra standoff? There are these little things right here that allow you to screw the motherboard into the case. And just looking at it right now and the fact that I've already done this before, uh, the standoffs are right. One thing to mention as well is when I install this, there are gonna be some missing standoffs here and here. The case does not come with any extra standoffs, but honestly, your build will be fine. It's not really gonna matter. But if you want to fill in those two extra standoff points, you will need to get extra standoffs separate from the case. So we'll go ahead and grab the motherboard by the CPU cooler. We're gonna go ahead and line it up with the IO shield. Make sure all the ports go in nicely and make sure nothing is blocked. And just like that, pushing it in, it should rest nicely on this raised standoff. So now we're nice and secure in and nothing on the back is blocked. Now we're gonna go and take our fine threaded screws, which are these right here, just for comparison, that right there is a fine threaded screw. And that right there is the coarse thread screw we use for the power supply. We're gonna take our fine thread screw and we're going to screw in right here, right here, right below it, to the right over here, right below that, and then right back over here. And we're gonna go ahead and do that. And yeah, guys, your motherboard is now installed. We can go ahead and set up the case. And as you can see, we have everything installed and ready to get all the cables plugged in. We're gonna be Jackson back in here. We're gonna show you guys how to plug in things like the 24 pin, the eight pin, all these other fun cables that may look a little intimidating, but honestly, guys, it's much easier than you might think. Get everything plugged up, put our graphics card in, and then we can get to gaming. All right, guys, now is the fun part. We're gonna be doing some cable installation and management. So we're gonna start off with the 24 pin. This is the main power for the motherboard. I'm gonna go ahead and take that from the power supply. And we got a little bit of an extended motherboard here, so I'm gonna have to kinda oh, really stretch that in there. All right, so go ahead and line it up. I've given all I can. Push it in, tuck it back in, it's done its job. All right, guys, next up is going to be the main power for the CPU. This is called the CPU 4 plus 4 or CPU A pin. So I'm gonna go ahead we're gonna run that through the top here. So as you can see, it's coming out right there and we're gonna plug up right here. Push it in, push that back, and boom, CPU power is good to go. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do, this is kinda like a preemptive step. We're gonna go ahead and run the PCIe power. So this is gonna look something like this. You're gonna actually have uh, two eight pins or six plus two pins, and they'll say PCIe on the side. This case honestly doesn't have like the greatest spot, so I'm gonna run it kind of similarly to how I did the 24 pin, but at the very bottom. 
And you'll see eventually, after you God. go through the cave, out the left side, down Whoa. the track. There it is! Yay! Oh, grab, grab that. All right, so you see it coming tug, out like tug so. Tug on it. We'll go ahead and pull the entire, <laughs> where's the other part? <laughs> there we go. So we'll go ahead and pull the entire part through, as you can see right here. And we're just gonna leave it laying like so until uh, we need it. So there it is. So I think we'll go ahead and do the front panel because that one's a little bit of a tough step. So this is the front panel. It's a bunch of small connectors and that's gonna be like your power switch and other stuff like that. So this case only has one little cutout right kind of in the middle of the board. So I'm gonna run that to Matt. We're gonna have to try to get multiple things through here too. I'm not sure how the USB 3 is gonna get through there, but we'll yeah. get to that point later. As you can see, there's the front panel working its way out. Um, I do only have a reset switch and a power <laughs> LED. Oh my god, go. Did you get them all? Oh, there it is. All right. So the caliper is going to put a diagram on screen. The front panel is right here. And we're going to go in the following order. First up, we're going to do the power LED in the top left corner, the positive and negative. Then we're going to do the reset switch in the bottom right. And then the power switch right above it. Now we're going to push that cable back through. And our front panel is hooked up and ready to go. So now the next thing I'm going to go ahead and give Matt is actually two things. This is HD audio and USB 2.0. HD audio is obviously labeled, but it's also going to be missing a pin towards the middle. USB is missing the pin towards the very far side. And I'm going to try to get these through the same spot that we just ran the front panel. So I'm going to kind of scoot these over. All right, that one's coming through. Second one coming through. There it is. There All we right. go. We got both. This one's HD audio. This one's USB. USB is right here. Go ahead and plug in our USB header like so. So you see right here, here's our HD audio, and we're gonna be plugging that up all the way over here. Make sure to line up the missing pin. Line it up, push it in. Now Jackson, can you pull some of those back through a little bit? There you go, so we'll do that. Again, not the cleanest. I wish this case had more cutouts, but unfortunately, that's all we got. So we're gonna have to run the USB 3.0 through the same spot we ran the PCIe. This case is making me laugh. Who designed this thing? <laughs> Okay guys, so now we have the USB 3 right here. So this right here is the USB 3. We're gonna go ahead and take the header, go over here, line it up, and plug it up. We'll have Jackson pull that through a little bit. So the last thing we need to plug in before we plug in the graphics card is a fan splitter. This is how our fans are plugged in, which is kind of nice, they're all in one. But I'm gonna go ahead and put that to the top here. This board might have multiple spots, but this seems the most convenient. Could you do this convenient. spot right here? Yeah. This spot looks a little clean. Right, right. Yep, yep, do that. And then here's our fan header. Go ahead and line it. Oh, look at it. Make it a little more slack. Line it up. Put it in there. And boom, the cable is now installed. Mm. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and take all these cables. Um, and then Matt's pretty much good to put in the grab star. I just want to get these kind of out of my way. I don't want to look at them. Uh, and I'm going to just <coughs> shove them all right up in here. All right, guys, so here's our graphics card right here, the good old 1660 Ti. Once again, you can get one of these, a Super, if you want to save a little bit of money, but anywhere between like $100 to $120 is a good price point to make this bill about $500 or about 480 bucks in total. So all in all, really nice graphics card. We're going to go ahead and install the graphics card in this bottom slot right here. But we need to remove this cover in the back first. So we're going to take our screwdriver and unscrew this cover right here. And we'll go ahead and make sure where we need to install our GPU and which covers we need to remove. As we can see right here, when we put the GPU in there, it's going to be these two right here. Which in this case, I will say, they do a very interesting job at just leaving them in there like so. But hey, you know what? Budget case is going to budget case. Go ahead and unscrew these screws right here. These are the same coarse thread screws that you do use for like your power supply. And we will hang on to them because we will use them to screw in the graphics card. Get rid of these things, move them out of the way. Take our graphics card, line it up with the PCI slots, and then firmly push it in. Just like that, the GPU is installed. We're gonna go ahead and take our two screws we just took out and screw in the graphics card right here. And then we're gonna put the cover back on. Boom, just like that, we're good to go. Now we need to install the power for the graphics card, which you can see right here. This is an eight pin power. All right, so here is our eight pin power. We're going to plug it up right here. Go ahead, line it up, plug it in till it clicks. And then we gotta do a little cable management here while Jackson's doing cable management in the back. Try to tuck this cable as cleanly as we possibly can. Make it look a little nicer, like so. But that's gonna be some work that we'll do here in just a second. And then from there, the build is theoretically ready to go. 
and it'll be ready to play some games. And we're gonna go ahead and see what it can do after some cable management. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick cable management session. So you guys probably saw a minute ago, I went ahead and shoved a lot of my extra cables into this hard drive cage. We're not ever gonna put a hard drive into this system. So why not use that empty space to hide some cables? So now what I'm gonna do from there is I like to kind of take the cables in bunches at a time and just try to do like pretty, pretty smooth runs essentially. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one here. And then you're just gonna see me basically repeat this process multiple times. Uh, and I usually go from the top down because we usually leave the bottom near the power supply a little bit unmanaged so that if you need to replace any components or anything, it's kind of easy to do. All right, so it's looking actually pretty good. We didn't really have to use a whole lot of zip ties. And then these are called flush cuts, really nice tool to have. You can buy this for a couple bucks off of Amazon or your local hardware store. And then you just cut all the zip ties. And one extra step I usually even like to do is flip the zip ties around so that you're not able to see the part that you cut. And I think that makes it look the build look really clean. It just shows that you kind of care and went the extra mile. But at this point, we're ready to turn the build on. All right, guys, we are playing some Halo Infinite and we are currently at 1080p max FOV. We got unlocked frame rate. We're at a medium quality preset and this is a AAA title and it runs mm -hmm. like a AAA title. It's pretty demanding. Go ahead and see what we can get in some Halo 3 refueled. So far, pretty good. As long as we get 60 plus FPS in this game, that's really, as you can tell, pushing that 16, 16 Ti to 100%. I'm pretty happy with it. I've been playing this in the AR. I don't know if they changed the AR. The AR seems more powerful. No, the AR, I feel like it's been been busted for a yeah. while. Like that AR was like never good in any Halo game. They were managing to get uh, pretty close to 90 FPS most of the time. Uh, Latency is a little bit higher, but honestly, like if you're not running like pretty high in specs. I would say at least like $1,200. This game is pretty hard to get any like super decent latency in. Oh, that one's gonna hit. What if that killed him? That went crazy. Get him. Can't, you can't get me, bro. You can't, okay, he might be able to he get might me, be able to get you. You think I'm... Oh, oh, that was a good grenade. Oh, God. Oh, God. Where am I? Oh, God. Ah! Wow. Oh, that that's, was... that's some bull crap, dude. Oh, wait, hold take up. One with me. Uh, <laughs> I have to get the spanker. Ah. Oh. Wow. And one. Easy dub. Easy so, Halo run. 90 FPS and medium settings, AAA title. I'm curious to see what else it'll do in some esports titles. Next game. All right, gamers. We are now playing Fortnite 1080p DX11 on performance settings. And um, yeah, I expect some good results with this combo. Uh, we've done a lot of budget PCs with the 1660 Super, 1660 Ti, ranging from like $400 up to $500. And it has no problem when paired with the right CPU playing this game at 100 plus FPS. It's got the aesthetic. This one has the platform as well to upgrade a little bit better than some of those other budget builds. Oh, no! Oh. Did I hear water bending? I, oh, uh -oh. that's. Uh oh. What is oh. Fortnite? It's got a hand cannon. Oh. Let's go again. Jesus. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, FPS is getting even better too. I mean, three drops. We're all loaded in, ladies and gentlemen. Quantum Fig was not ready for that. Mm -hmm. Dang, that pistol is. <laughs> that God, pistol dude. is amazing. Ooh. Oh. Oh, the hand cannon. I, I can't give up this. Hey! Oh! Oh, he's got it too. Oh my god, the ultimate ship. Ooh! <laughs> oh <laughs> my god, A1 steak sauce. Oh my lord! As you guys can see, Fortnite runs great. We have some other AAA titles installed that we are gonna play to really stress this thing to its limits. And then that 3D Mark times by score. Um, and I remember the other games, Helldivers 2 and Spider-Man Miles Morales to see what the performance looks like and show you guys how you can win one of these PCs. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking our giveaway PC and it performed really well. And as you can see from the benchmarks today, we did Halo Infinite and Fortnite, easily getting a 60 plus FPS experience and Fortnite 100 plus FPS. And we did test some other games to really stress this thing to its limits. And we tested Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1080p high settings with no FSR, we got 60 plus FPS. And then Helldivers 2, a newer title on medium settings with ultra quality FSR, we got 50 to 60 FPS, definitely seeing the limits of the 1660 Ti. But for the price, this $500 build, 
did really well. And the cent per point in 3D Mark Time Spy was eight cents per point with a score of 6,456. So all in all, not too bad of a build, looking pretty solid. And you could win one of these PCs by going to twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. On April 12th, you could win this PC, specifically this one right here, and uh, hang out, have a fun time. We play a lot of games, we do a lot of other giveaways. So head on over to twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. Hit that follow button so you do not miss the PC giveaway. And don't forget, if you don't make it to this one, we do one of these every single month. So just make sure you follow twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. But as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. And on top of this one that we're giving away, we're also replicating it with four more that you can buy at PCBros.Tech with a one-year warranty. PCBros.Tech, building PCs isn't for everybody. If you want to buy a PC ready to go with a one-year warranty, you can do that today at PCBros. Use code TOZYBROS to uncheck out. You'll save 2% your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye.